Would you join me in a word of prayer? Father, yes, our God is an awesome God. Yes, amen. He is the only God. There is none like you, O Lord. So we lift up our praise to you this morning, Lord. Beyond thankful that we get to come to such a place that you have so graciously blessed us with to worship. And Lord, more importantly, to hear your word. Would you speak to us, Lord? Holy Spirit, would you lead, comfort, guide our hearts, Lord, this morning that we may hear what you have for us. So would you speak, Lord, and be with Pastor J.D. Continue to bless comfort, strengthen, encourage, minister, and protect him and his family as he does your will, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Good morning. Welcome. So glad you're here. You can be seated. Those of you online, we're so glad that you're joining with us. A couple things, though, before we jump in. Uh, the first of which is that we're going to include the link to Tuesday night's prayer meeting teaching titled Demonic Spirit Manifestations. We've had a lot of people ask about this. I do address in the video the manifestation of a demonic spirit towards the end of the Sunday, March 24th Prophecy Update live stream. That link will be on the downloadable PDF file of both today's update and then also the second service sermon. I want to mention though that this Thursday uh, we're continuing in our verse by verse study through the book of Daniel. So Daniel Thursday nights, Revelation Sunday mornings, doesn't get any better than that. Uh, we're going to finish, uh, Lord willing, and if we're still here, uh, chapter 2, where King Nebuchadnezzar's fearful and worrisome dream concerning his future and his kingdom is interpreted by Daniel. Not only interpreted by Daniel, but Daniel is actually given the revelation in a vision of what the dream was before he interprets it. So that, then you know it's the interpretation when you know the dream first, without being told. So we saw that last week. But what we're going to see this week is how this dream that Nebuchadnezzar had speaks to our day prophetically, but also why worrying about the future is a complete waste of time personally. I know none of you worry. <laughs> That'll be this Thursday, live streamed beginning on the website at 7 p.m. Hawaii time with the worship, and then 7.30 on the other social media platforms. Now, 11.15 a.m. today, Hawaii time again, is the sermon, that second service. This is the verse by verse study through Revelation. And today we're going to look at how the Lord, as only He can, vis-a-vis -vis prophecy can supernaturally strengthen us with patient endurance in our suffering. Uh, patient endurance, meaning that you can have endurance, but not patient endurance. Again, I know all of you are patient, but anyway, that'll be second service. This service is our prophecy update. We devote this time weekly to Bible prophecy and everything that's happening in the world today and how it points to the end, which we're in now. The end. This is how it ends. Uh, I do want to mention though, for those that are watching by way of YouTube or Facebook, that you might want to go directly to the website jdfarag.org for the uncensored and uninterrupted entirety of the update. And so with that, let's get right to it. What I'm hoping to accomplish for today's update 
is explain why the crazier everything gets in the world, the closer we get to the pre-tribulation rapture and the end of the world. You'll be happy to know that I've gone to great lengths to shorten the length of today's update. <laughs> wow, you didn't even hesitate to laugh when I said that. I see how it is. Rough crowd. But actually, uh, this for a couple of reasons. First, the nature of what I have to share today will speak for itself in the sense that it doesn't require me to exhaustively expound on it. That's not to say that it won't be exhausting. It just won't be exhaustive. <laughs> Uh, I shared that on Thursday night, and we were still very exhausted afterwards. But the second reason, and perhaps more importantly, the way I'm going to share what I'm going to share will lend itself to just being more succinct by default, if I can say it that way. And what I mean by that is I'll simply and briefly just go through some of what I'll just call the crazies, the craziest things that are now happening, particularly as it relates to this much talked about and anticipated solar eclipse tomorrow, which we talked about a couple of weeks ago. However, before we do, I think it's incumbent upon all of us, myself included, by the way, this is for my benefit, to first go to the Word of God, <laughs> especially in this regard. And we need to do this because that's how we establish a firm foundation and sound foundation doctrinally. Let's start with Matthew 16, the first four verses. Then the Pharisees and the Sadducees came and testing him, speaking of course of Jesus, asked that he would show them a sign from heaven. He answered and said to them, when it is evening, you say, it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and threatening. Hypocrites! You know how to discern the face of the sky, but you cannot discern the signs of the times. I'm standing right in front of you. That which you search the Scriptures for is looking right at you and talking right to you. Please note that Jesus was not as angry as I was in just <laughs> saying that. I'm not angry. I'm just it's a sanctified anger. It's of course righteous anger whenever I do it. But there was strength in what He said to them, and rightfully so, because He goes on to say, a wicked and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, and no sign shall be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. And I love this part, He left them and departed. Bye. Do you ever put yourself in the text, in the narrative? It's great, I tell you. It's way better than Netflix, just so you know. I mean, I put myself there. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of standing a little bit off in the background. And here come the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and they're going to they're gonna try to test and trick Him and catch Him with this question. We need a sign from heaven to just authenticate and validate and verify that you are who you say you are. So give us a sign. <laughs> Jesus is like, you want a sign? <laughs> he doesn't. That's, I would have been in the back going, you, never mind. You would have been right next to me, by the way, doing the same thing. 
But then he, he responds like this. And after he responds like this and calls them this, you hypocrites, you wicked and evil and adulterous generation that seeks a sign. You're not going to get a sign. You already got a sign. No sign except for Jonah will be given you. And then can, can you just let me have this one? He just, after he says that, <laughs> right? Oh, I would have loved to have been there. Because you know where I'm going. When he walked away, I'm, I'm going with him. I'm, I'm not sticking around, you hypocrites. Anyway, Luke 21, verses 25 through 28. And there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them from fear, and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud. This is the second coming with power and great glory. Now, verse 28, we quote this often, when these things key word begin to happen. Look up and lift up your heads, because your redemption draws near. Matthew 24, beginning in verse 4. I'm going to read from a different translation. I know that messes people up. For the updates, I have several, actually numerous, Bible translations from which I pick from. And I usually choose the one that I think is a better fit in the context of what that update is about. I might as well just mention, it's probably as good of a time as any. We get asked this a lot. On Thursday nights, we're in the, I use the New King James Version. It, I think, is closer to the original language of the Hebrew Old Testament. And on Sunday mornings for the second service in the New Testament, um, I use the New International Version 1984. In fact, this, I will never, you can't get them anymore. Maybe a used bookstore not the 2011. So this is the 1984 version. I got saved in 82. I bought this in 84. And I'm never getting rid of it. <laughs> so don't even think about it. Why? Because it is closer to the New Testament Greek. Now sometimes I'll use the NASB 1995, sometimes the New King James. I'm very uh, uh, much willing to, when appropriate, use the King James Version. But I have a variety and really uh, a number of Bible versions and translations that I use. So please don't get hung up on that. Now that was a preface, because the I'm not going to tell you what version this is, because you'll tune out and click off and walk away like Jesus did in the previous passage. So verse 4, Matthew 24. And the other reason I'm using this particular translation is because we've read this and talked about this and know this so well, maybe too well. So I want you to listen to this translation of this passage. This is in response to the disciples asking Jesus, what will be the signs of the coming of the end of the age and your return? Translated, what will the world look like before the end and at the time of the end? And this is Jesus' answer. Jesus told them, don't let anyone mislead you. Let no man deceive you. For many will come in my name claiming, I am the Messiah and they will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and threats of wars. 
But don't panic. Yes, these things must take place. But the end won't follow immediately. Nation will go to war against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in many parts of the world. But all this is only the first of the birth pains with more to come. Do you see why I read that particular translation? It kind of changes the complexion of it a little bit, yeah? All right, last one, 2 Timothy chapter 3. We've talked about this in prior updates over the years as well. We also studied through 2 Timothy verse by verse recently. I want to begin reading in verse 1 of chapter 3, 2 Timothy. This is where Paul, by the Holy Spirit, is writing to Timothy about what is going to characterize the very last days. It's akin to what Jesus just did in answering the disciples about, this is what will mark the last days. This is what the world is going to look like at the time of the end. He says, but mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days perilous times, crazy times in the last days. And then he goes on to list, I am going to read them briefly, 19 characteristics that will mark the time of the end. In other words, you'll know it's the end when you see the world like this. It's going to be horrible, crazy, terrible, perilous. He begins in verse 2, people will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying its power, have nothing to do with them. Does that read like your news feed? Okay. The common denominator with, I just read four passages. There are many like them, many with them. And the common denominator is that they all foretell just how crazy, perilous, terrible the world will get at the time of the end. I'll say it again. The closer we get to the pre-tribulation rapture and the end of the world, the more perilous and crazy things will get in the world. Would you agree with me that things are pretty crazy right now? It's going to get crazier as we get closer. What follows are what, again, I'm going to call the crazies. I mean, this is just crazy. Now, I have abbreviated them in the interest of time and for the aforementioned reasons. So you ready? Crazy. Let's start with CERN. You know about this? Well, the reports now are that they're planning to start back up this large Hadron Collider tomorrow for the first time in three years during the solar eclipse, so as to, and I quote, search for invisible matter that secretly powers our universe. No need. By the way, crazy, I know. Pictured here are the logos for CERN and the World Economic Forum. 
You'll notice I've highlighted in red the curious presence of 666 on both. I probably could have done a better job. Uh, I hope you appreciate that I spent way too much time trying to perfect it. I'm not a perfectionist. <laughs> yes, I am. And so I had to just say, no, that's enough. But it gets better. Uh, look closely at this. This is crazy. Uh, but I've highlighted what appears to be an eclipse. Do you see that? Now, I know what you're thinking, because again, I can read minds. The second. If I look in your direction, it means I'm picking something up. Whoa. No, it's okay. <laughs> you're good. I know what you're thinking. That, come on. That, that's just coincidence. Okay. That's fine. Uh, you'll be happy to know that the so-called fact checkers have gone to great extent, to a great extent, to ensure that you have a soft pillow to lay your gullible head in, and also plenty of sand in which to bury that same gullible head in. That's fine. If you want to just dismiss this as coincidence or conspiracy theories, fine. But you need to know this. This is so important to understand. Symbolism is extremely important in Satanism. Numbers have supreme significance in Satanism, in the occult. Example, I'm going to give you two. The number 13. Did we talk about this recently? I'm going to talk about it again, just real quick. Uh, you know that some hotels and buildings don't even have a 13th floor? They're so superstitious. No, seriously, for real. Next time you're in an elevator, check. 12, 14. Wow, there's no 13. No, unlucky number. Why 13? Oh, because Jesus was the 13th. You had the 12 disciples. 12 plus 1 is 13. Oh, that's a coincidence. Okay, fine. Get the pillow. Here's the sand. Go to Kailua Beach if you want. The number 33. You know how significant the number 33 is? In the occult, in, in the 33rd degree masonry. So satanic. Why 33? Why not 34? Why not 32? Actually, 322. Skull and bones. There's a significance to that date and number as well. I won't get into that. You can search it if you want. Do your own research. Be careful when you do, by the way. <laughs> but why 33? Oh, that's the age that Jesus was when He was crucified. And when Lucifer was cast out of heaven, he took a third of the angels with him. 33. 3-3. Three, three. So if you want to dismiss the coincidence of the symbolism in their logos, and by the way, they're, they're not covering this up anymore. I mean, they're in your face with this now. These, anyway, I'm not going to just forget it. I'm not going to go there. Kind of already did, but speaking of Satanism, NASA, do you know the, uh, I'm making an exception uh, in referencing NASA, but did you know that the origin of NASA is satanic to its core? A guy by the name of Jack Parsons, who was actually in with L. Ron Hubbard, the founder of the very demonic and satanic cult known as Scientology. 
He was the first who got satanic intelligence to develop the jet pro propulsion that would eventually become known as NASA. Very demonic. You know what they're going to do tomorrow? They're going to fire three rockets. Three. Why not four? How about two? No, three. It's going to come up again in a moment. Three is very significant to the Satanist, because three days, the only sign, Jonah was in the belly of the big fish, Jesus in the belly of the earth. He rose on the third day. Three is very significant. Three rockets, and it gets better or worse, depending on how you want to look at it. Oh, by the way, one of them will be fired at 3.22 p.m., 3.22. That's skull and bones. Oh, by the way, you want to get political? One president, George W. Bush, his father, George H. W. Bush, his father, which would be W's grandfather, Prescott Bush, Satanists, skull and bones. 322. All right. Now that I got your attention, why is this important? What's so significant about this? I mean, call me crazy. I've been called worse. But you know what they're calling these rockets? APEP. <coughs> What's APEP? Oh, APEP is named after the ancient Egyptian spirit of evil, darkness, and destruction. Notice the caption under the graphic pictured here, depicting the Apep spirit. I'll read it for you, since it's like a three font. Quote, Apep attacking the solar boat. Solar boat? Apep? And that's what NASA is calling these these, the, the, the APEP, that's the mission. It's dubbed the APEP mission. They knowingly and deliberately named it after a serpent deity in Egyptology. And it's not just these demonic entities in Egypt, of which there are many. It's India. This is a statue of Lord Shiva. You might remember a few years ago, maybe a number of years ago now, when Obama, demonically possessed, put an image of Lord Shiva on the Empire State Building. Do you remember that? There's a Time Magazine cover of Obama, and this riled up the, the people in India who worship this deity, Lord Shiva, he, there's a picture of him, and the caption under Obama is, the God of all worlds. And he's posing in the same exact way. I shouldn't try to do that. I'll end up being hospitalized. <laughs> that, that flexibility ship has sailed long ago. But, that's a, but, the, but Obama is literally mimicking this exact pose of Lord Shiva from India. Who's Lord Shiva? Oh, just the, the, the goddess of death, darkness, and destruction. Like Apep, the spirit of evil, darkness, and destruction. By the way, this is a, a photo. We, we purchased the rights to these, so you know, we're not violating any copyrights. So um, I uh, uh, paid for the license of this uh, photo. You know where this photo uh, is uh, taken from? CERN! CERN! Yeah, the country of India gifted CERN, this statue of the Lord Shiva, prominently placed there at CERN. You okay? Well, if you want to leave, go ahead. But can I just tell you on your way out that 
if you're interested, you might want to do a deep dive into the satanic role of Egyptology in our modern society, particularly here in America, specifically in a place called Washington, D.C., District of Columbia. You know what you're going to find? Well, you're going to find a lot of stuff, <laughs> and it's going to be chilling and eye-opening, as well it should. But what you're also going to find is the profound significance of eclipses and astrology in Egyptology. It is riddled throughout every fabric, woven into the very fabric of modern day society, particularly in this country. Well, just look at the back of your dollar bill. Not right now, you can do it after. Alistair Crowley. By the way, this is probably as good of a time as any to make a correction. I, I made a mistake. I mentioned that on the album cover of the Eagles Hotel California. If you look in the window, you'll see Alistair Crowley. I was incorrect. I stand corrected. I apologize for the error. It's not Alistair Crowley. It's Anton LaVey, the founder of the First Church of Satan in California. That, that's even worse. <laughs> But Aleister Crowley is on the Beatles album, The Lonely, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. And Aleister Crowley is a, was a professed Satanist, referred to himself as the Beast, and was demonic, demonically possessed by legions, I believe. So he wrote this book called The Book of the Law. And it's the central sacred text of Thelema. According to Crowley, the text was dictated to him by a supernatural being calling himself Aiwas, A-I-A-I, W-A-S-S. -S. This is the entity that gave him, dictated to him, the writings that were in this book, supernaturally in the, in the demonic realm. Well, in the book, there is this proclamation of the arrival of a new age, the new age, in the spiritual evolution of humanity to be known as the Eon, or Age of Horus. Horus, Iris, Egyptology. Age of Horus is also known as the Age of Aquarius. Since I'm um, basically saying all presidents are demon possessed, we might as well bring Trump back in uh, to the, uh, don't, don't click yet, just wait. Um, <laughs> at one of his uh, rallies. Uh, this was a few years ago. Uh, well, at one of them, he played uh, the Rolling Stones version of Sympathy for the Devil. Don't you know my name? I better not sing it, because it's going to, you're going to start having flashback, or I'll start having a flashback. That would be worse. Pleased to meet you. Won't you guess my name? Well, he played that. Uh, another time he played a, an older song, some of you might remember this, called Age of Aquarius, Age of Aquarius. Hum a few bars, I'll join in. Age of Aquarius? That's the Age of Horus. That's Egyptology. That's satanic. Now, the most well-known quote from the book is found everywhere, and I mean everywhere, in pop culture and music, particularly music. And you'll see it, I mean, just splattered on everything. What is it? Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. I'm going to take you back again, some of you older people. That was terrible the way I said it. Some of you have been around for a while. That's not as good either. You know who I'm talking about. Back in the 
There's no redeeming this one. <laughs> Timothy O'Leary. What was that? Uh, check, uh, tune in, ch check out. Is someone going to help me out here? What is it? Tune in, drop, check out, forget it. You guys don't know either. Then maybe that's a good thing. Stay innocent. There's a quote of him. I have this video archived on my computer, downloaded. There's a quote of him saying, uh, I was a follower of Aleister Crowley, and the Aleister Crowley said, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. A lot of these satanic bands have this, not just subconsciously or subliminally in the lyrics, now it's just overtly. It's right there on the album covers. This quote from Aleister Crowley. By the way, the aforementioned Beatles, Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Sergeant Pepper taught the band to play. Who's Sergeant Pepper? Aleister Crowley. So where are you going with this, Pastor? Well, this book of the law that was demonically written contains three chapters, three, each of which was alleged to be written down in one hour while Crowley was in Cairo, Egypt, back in the year 1904. And here's what's crazy. He timed this trip, it was actually his honeymoon, to give birth to a, quote, moon child through a satanic ritual around the planetary alignment and the moon's position and an eclipse. And this entity dictated the book of the law to Crowley in Cairo, beginning at 12 noon on April 8th. And this continued three chapters for three days, April 8th, April 9th, April 10th. What if I told you that to this day occultists celebrate this event on April 8th of all days? Just so you know, don't have to look at your calendar. Tomorrow's the, the 8th of April. Crazy, huh? Gets better. Here's another crazy. Pictured here is a tweet from USA Today who posted, and I quote, the solar eclipse and the horned devil comet. Two good reasons to look up on April 8th. <laughs> no, thank you. I don't, I don't need two good reasons. I got one very good reason to look up, and it's not the horned devil comet. It's Jesus Christ. <laughs> How crazy is this? This is all tomorrow, by the way. I don't know. What are you doing tomorrow? Uh, this, this comet, and it, it's called the devil comet because it splits, and then it leaves a, a path that looked like two horns. <laughs> the devil comet. Coming soon to a world near you. During the eclipse. And that's not all. Here, here's some crazy crazier, or crazier crazy. In concert with this devil comet appearing during the eclipse, there will also be a planetary alignment of seven planets. And it gets even crazier. You ready for this? This planetary alignment will appear to form a straight line in the sky when looking out from Jerusalem toward the east. Wow! This is crazy. So crazy is this, that FEMA, the National Guard, et al., are all taking this very seriously. And justified or not, they are commencing with countless closures and warnings. And this at both federal and state levels, with some even issuing a state of emergency as precautionary measures. I, I heard one report that just in the state of Texas, 
they have shut down all transportation, so no supplies are going anywhere. And I want to say it was like, it's probably eight, who knows, it's probably seven, hope it's not three, <laughs> counties that they have basically blocked off and shut down tomorrow, all because of this eclipse. And that's not even the crazy part. You know what the crazy part is? They've been, according to Newsweek, they have been planning for tomorrow's eclipse, forget this, two years. So that means in 2022, they were already planning for tomorrow. Okay, here's some more crazy. This one has to do with this Reuters report concerning the increasing threats of war against Israel from none other than Iran. It's for this reason that Israel, according to Reuters, is, quote, beefing up its defenses and staying on high alert after Iran is threatening war, Matthew 24. This after an airstrike on Iran's embassy compound in, of all places, Damascus, Syria, last Monday, a week ago tomorrow, April 1st. Can you say Ezekiel 38? Possibly Isaiah 17? Speaking of Israel beefing up, pun intended. <laughs> Come on, let me have that one. As of right now, people are still alleging that the red heifer sacrifice that we talked about last Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, will commence either right before Passover on April 22nd, which is in 16 days, or 50 days after, which would put it on the Feast of Shavuot, or the Feast of Weeks, or Pentecost as it's known. Okay. That's my abbreviated list. Again, I left a lot out. I know that some people take issue with me saying that, because you, you want to know what's left out, right? Well, I left it out, so I'm not going to tell you. There's one more crazy. And dare I say, this is the crazy of crazies. I was surprised of this by a brother here in the church, and then also a sister who for years has been part of our online church. I want to share it with you as we bring it in for an early landing. You know how I always say, don't look at your watch? Actually, I want you to look at your watch right now. You can see how well we're doing. We're going to arrive ahead of schedule. <laughs> but this is so crazy literally, in every sense of the word. But we're going to go ahead at this time and end the live stream on YouTube and Facebook and redirect you. Hopefully you're already there. <laughs> 